What is good, YouTube? Thank you for tuning in to another review. This is not your average sneakerhead, Tony Ramsey. And today we're taking a look at the Nike and Clock collaboration on the Air Max One Kiss of Death. Now, before we get into the review of this sneaker, this is your first time here. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider subscribing to the channel. We are very close to 2,000 subs and 5,000 subscribers was the goal for 2021. And with your help, we can definitely get there. And all you have to do is a few things. One, hit that little subscribe button. Two, leave this video a like or a thumbs up. Three, drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about this sneaker as any kind of engagement does help YouTube channels grow. Definitely appreciate you guys taking out time to, to watch my review and looking forward to bringing you guys more content as we continue to grow. Now with that out of the way, look at some details about this sneaker. So the Nike and Clot collaboration on the Air Max One Kiss of Death was available via Clot's uh, app on a raffle if you were international. They also have pop-ups over in Hong Kong and some other areas overseas. And I actually was able to win my pair via their uh, app raffle. Uh, took a shot at it, was a long shot, didn't really plan on, on, on hitting that raffle. But then when I got the notification via email and also in the app that I won, I, I couldn't believe it. So, so really glad I was able to get these in hand, give you guys a pretty good look at these. Uh, as it is a remake of the original one that came out back in 2006, while this one does have some subtle changes to it, this is probably gonna be one of my favorite sneakers of the year. And with March being Air Max month, no better time to go ahead and give you guys a good look at this sneaker. But before we get into the review, let's take a look at the box. So these do come in a black Nike sportswear box. It does have this, uh, the Chinese symbols right there on the top of it. They also do have a little bit of an emblem right there that resembles the sole of the sneaker. Some Nike branding on the top of the box. It is in a matte black, so it's not in that glossy black like some other Nike sportswear boxes. You do have some Nike branding around the sides of the box. Some Chinese characters on the end of the box on that side. Then on this side is where you have your, Nike, your sizing information and your label. And these read Nike Air Max One Clot. Got these in a size eight and a half. The official colorway is net deep red and orange blaze they do not have a usd price tag on them because i mentioned i got these from clots app which is actually an overseas app i think they were with shipping i want to say like around 190 bucks out the door then once you get the box open a nice detail there at the top of it you do have the chart that represents the numbers that are on the outsole of the sneaker and what each part of that uh it does use a uh, foot flexology we'll get more details about that later on in the video then you do have some transparent clot paper. Then under the paper, you do have your sneakers. Then also underneath the sneakers, you do have that uh, foot flexology chart there at the very bottom of the box. Very nice touch. So tons of details already on the sneaker and we're just in the unboxing portion of it. And you also do have your YDM uh, tab right there at the top of the box as well. Let's go take a look at the sneakers themselves. So as I mentioned, these have tons of details on them. So I'm going to try to do my best to give you guys a good look at every detail about the sneaker itself. So hopefully this review doesn't take too long. But we'll start here at the toe box and the mud guard. So you guys can see right there, this has really high quality suede materials all over the sneaker. So on that mud guard there, that is all done like in a tan or a beige type of suede. And the top of the mud guards where the vamp is, it's probably one of the most unique details about the sneaker. You do have that all clear toe box with the preparation hole. So if you guys like to wear different color socks, that would definitely make the shoe pop a little bit more. You can change the look of the sneaker uh, wear to wear. So I think it's really dope. And we'll move on to the lateral side. And on the lateral side, you do have some more of those panels that are all done in suede. So the sneaker itself too is also really thin. There isn't a whole lot of backing to it. The plastic on the toe box does have some structure to help the shoe keep it shape. But other than that, it's just mainly just like uh, this leather and suede that keeps the sneaker uh, all together. Another dope feature. Did come with this little tab right here that says this product is made with natural dye leather and may have dye uh, migration. Wearing, wearing it with dark socks is recommended. You guys can see that right there. That's what it says on one side. Then on the other side, it does have that in uh, the Chinese characters. Then we got the medial side, some more suede paneling. Also see there's a little bit more of that uh, clear part that goes right there off of the sneaker. Then you do have a snakeskin type of leather uh, Nike check right there that is done like in a burgundy touch color. Then right above it, you have like some uh, ostrich looking print leather right here. Then you do have this light head of green, a little pop of color right there for the eyelets. 
And as I mentioned, this is all done in leather. You guys can see how that kind of leather looks too from the side there. Just really high quality leather, a pretty thick cut as well. Then moving on to the rear of the sneaker, this is one detail that's a little bit different than the original. This one has like more of a, this uh, this red tab on the back, whereas I think on the original that was an orange tab. But you do have some orange stitching for the clot logo and the like little um, weaving pattern all along that back logo as well. Some more of this uh, base suede at the bottom, then some leather up here at the top where uh, the top of the, the rear of the sneaker is. Medial side, same details as the lateral side. Uh, got the leather tab right here running across the back. Some more of that suede paneling and leather up here at the top as well with another uh, green eyelet at the top. Moving on to the tongue. The tongue is done in leather as well. The bottom part of the tongue is done in that red leather with the top of the tongue does have a suede Nike patch with the green Nike Air Max branding on top. These also do come with beige wax laces on this one. Then on the right sneaker, you actually do get a set of burgundy or, red, or a deep red color uh, set of wax laces as well. We'll move on to the midsole of the sneaker. The midsole of the sneaker is done in a nice orange color. Very clear air bubble and inside the air bubble that is done in like burgundy-ish colors for the pillars inside the air bubble. Then on the outsole, it is all translucent with some more of that foot flexology type of details in there. And each one of these like little areas in there have a, has a number to it too. And that does coincide with the chart that's on the top of the, of the shoe box. I think that's something to do with acupuncture as well too. If I'm wrong, please feel free to leave a comment down below to, to correct me. Because again, I'm learning about this sneaker just as quickly as you guys are. Another dope thing about this sneaker is the way that they used uh, not quite like a shoe tree, but more of a shoe horn to kind of keep the, help the sneaker keep its shape while inside the box. You did have this cardboard like tube that's bent right there. And how much of some pretty thick bought up paper. And we can look at the insole as well. I think these do come out pretty easily. So the insoles do come out very easily as they do in most Air Max ones. And you guys can see on the insole, there is a lot more uh, details on there as well. So really, really, really dope all the way around. Clot logo at the back of it, clot times Nike right there. You do have uh, the foot chart right there, it goes up to how the leg and is, and then you have some Chinese characters all on the side of the insole as well. So really dope. And on the bottom of the insole, standard Air Max One uh, bottom there. Looking at the right sneaker, see the outsole, this one is the exact same. Let's get this shoe tree and paper out of here. And I think this insole on the right sneaker is a little bit different as it does have the numbers on it. So at the rear of it, you do have a Nike check right there. Then on the top of the insole, you do have those numbers that represent how each number on the bottom of the, uh, of the foot coincides with uh, certain parts of the body. So really, really dope details all over this sneaker. One other detail about the sneaker too is this back tab right here at the rear of the sneaker, this red part right here, that is all done with some 3M inside of it. So I'll hit you guys with a flash of that and show you guys how that looks on the screen. But that does all glow in 3M if you hit it with a flash. And that's pretty much it for the details about the sneaker itself. So let's go ahead and get into sizing for this Air Max 1. Now typically in Air Max 1s, to me they run through the size, but I think with this one it runs a little bit big. Partly due to there not being a whole lot of padding inside of the sneaker. As I mentioned, it's there is not a whole lot of structure. Just the panels do keep it together. But other than that, it does feel very roomy inside. So if you do plan to pick a pair of these up, I recommend going true to size or you can even go down a half size. But if you're on the fence about sizing, just make note that they do run a little bit big because the, the inside of the sneaker does not have much padding on it at all. And comfort wise, keep that in mind too, because typically with Air Max ones, they're very comfortable, except for like the outsole can be a little bit stiff. The outsole on this one is like a little bit more squishy, but there's no padding anywhere inside the sneaker. So just keep that in mind because they might not be the most comfortable sneaker to wear on a day-to-day -day basis. And last but not least, let's talk about the resale value for the sneaker. So, so when the original one of this one dropped 15 years ago, back in 2006, those over time were climbed up all the way over a thousand dollars because it was one of the hardest Air Max sneakers to get. There weren't very many pairs of these out there in the market. So demand for these shot up extremely high. It was almost like one of those grails that you could probably not even like acquire because people weren't selling them. But now that these are re-released, the re-released version of these actually has a very, very fair resale. I think depending on your size, these are going like around the, the mid to like high to 200s. So I would recommend grabbing these now if you really wanted them, because I think that over time, these will definitely go up again over time. I would definitely recommend grabbing this soon because I can definitely see this being another 500 buck plus shoe over the next few years. So don't sleep. Grab them now if you really want the sneaker. I would definitely recommend it. But now that the review is out of the way, let's go ahead and get these both loosened up, get them on feet and show you guys exactly how they look.
that's gonna do it for my review of the Nike Clyde Air Max One Kiss of Death. Let me know what you guys think about this sneaker down in the comment section below. Definitely a very unique sneaker. A lot of people aren't gonna like that clear toe box, but to me, that unique level just puts these pretty much way up there on my list of uh, sneakers of the year. Definitely one of my favorites that I picked up so far in 2021. And if I do a top 10, you can definitely expect to see this sneaker on that list. But I'm very curious to see what you guys think, so leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you guys cop these, if you passed on them, where you go back and get them, or if it's not your cup of tea, definitely understand either way. Also, please be sure to subscribe to the channel as you will have more reviews as we continue to go forward. As I mentioned, 5,000 subs is the goal for 2021, and we are almost halfway there. So really appreciate you guys watching. Appreciate you guys joining all your support. That's gonna do it for my review. This is Not Your Average Sneakerhead, Tony Ramsey, looking at the clot and Nike Air Max One Kiss of Death. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch you guys on my next review. Peace.